Is she getting? Is she in? I think we started at 135. Says she's in. Oh, yeah, she's in now. You guys are all sharing your video. You don't have to do that. It's over. Davis is coming over. Oh, good. Um, you, can sure. just, you can just share your audio. Do we have to wait for everyone to get in? Or is everyone yeah. in? Yeah. So what's up, Ms. Ehrenberg? What's up? Oh my God. What's Tanner going to do when I turn off his video? Cry. Cry? Yeah. Ms. Ehrenberg, it was just me and Tanner in here for about 10 minutes. Did you guys fight? No, we had a nice chat. Yeah? Me and Ash and our bros now. Charlie, turn your video off. You're not even on here today. Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> Take a shower. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Tanner, am I coming through your garage? Yeah, yeah, just come through my garage. Are you, two, are you two going to share the screen is what you're going to do? Yeah. Okay, so okay. I'll let you guys have your screen on. Um, <clears throat> the rest of you can turn your video off. All I need is your audio. You guys aren't seeing me, are you? No. Okay. No. I don't care. I was just asking because I'm seeing something completely different. Um, I have to pull up the questions. Hannah, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Jemaya, homie G, happy birthday. What is Aya's that? not on. Oh, whose birthday is it? Hannah's. Oh, happy birthday, Hannah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I thought you were the chance. Oh, my gosh. Um, Sam. Since you weren't on yesterday, I appreciate you logging in today to take care of that. If yeah. you're not talking, mute your mic. Oh my gosh. Why is it? Oh, is it because Davis and Tanner are in the same room? Correct. Yeah, it's going to be a movie. Oh my gosh. This has <laughs> got to be taken as serious as possible, Mr. Lorms. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Who are we waiting for? Um, I don't. Th I think we're good, actually. Happy Let's cake day, Hannah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so Avery, Tanner, Troy, Madison, Natalie, Davis, Chris, Hannah, Briley, Shelby. Am I missing anyone? I'm trying to see all the names. Your guys' screen is coming up different than mine, so it's not. Riley's there. Sam's here. Sam's going to do this session. She was scheduled for yesterday, um, but she's going to be part of yours today. Um, can everyone make sure that they check their mic so that we can hear you? So Shelby, I'll go with you first. Hello. Okay, you're good. You can mute. Um, okay. Tanner and Davis will be together on the same screen. Yep. Um, Hannah, I heard you. Troy, can you check your mic? Hello. Um, Sam, can you check yours? I'm here. Okay. Avery. Hello. Thought I heard you. Um, Charlie, remember, you should be muted the whole time because you took part yesterday, so you should be taking I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I know. I'm saying you should be muted the whole time. You were in yesterday's seminar, so I don't want to hear your voice. All right, bet. Okay. You should be taking notes so that you can do your reflection. Um, Natalie, go ahead and talk. I'm here. Okay. Um, did I miss anyone that I haven't already heard their voice? Davis, I'm I right here. there so I can see you. Madison, I heard you earlier, so you're good. I'm All right. Um, Avery, are you my leader? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple things real quick before we get started. Um, guys, remember, we can see you. I can still write you up if I have to. If you do anything inappropriate, I'll just call your moms. Um, you guys are going to do, um, I'm going to load, once you guys are done, I'm going to load today's and um, yesterday's Socratic seminar discussion on a YouTube channel for you to listen to the audio. I just down, I just put it in the file. That's what I was working on. That's why it took me up there. That's better a little bit. Get rid of their faces. Um, you guys can share the mic. You don't need to have the screen on if you don't want to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're sharing the. Okay. That's fine. It works for me. Oh my gosh. Turn your, video, turn your video off. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take notes today on those two audio pieces that I will load. And you're only doing it for yesterday's group. And then you're going to add it to your um, 
self-reflection that I will load to. So you're really only submitting one assignment. It's going to have both parts though. It's going to have your notes and then it's going to have your self-reflection. Um, I will tell you, um, I know Charlie's in here, but I think yesterday's seminar took a little bit to get started, which was fine because people were struggling. But overall, I think it was a really beneficial seminar for them. I think not seeing each other's face kind of prevents you guys, you creates a different kind of attitude and you are a little less stressed out about that. Um, are there any questions before we start about anything that I've posted? You're not sure what you're supposed yes. to be doing? Go ahead. Um, on like the self-reflection when you click it, like is the first part where it talks about if you agree with someone and you don't, is that like for like our seminar or like the other one? Like the one um, it's, um, it's, main, it's mainly for yours because uh, you're taking notes on the other one. And you're going to post that, right? Well, I already posted the link for you to access it, but I'm going to put it in an assignment again so that you see it because you have to make a copy of it. Some people have already started theirs because they already are done with their seminars. And that's due tonight? It's due tomorrow night. Oh, man. So you have, you have about 24 hours to get it done. Okay. Thank okay. you. Um, if you did not log into Edpuzzle and create your account or do the assignment, that is a, that is a summative assignment. So it's 70% of your grade. And my goal was to kind of hope that you guys would get a free 100 because it was on MLA format. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Can I retake it? I got an 80. Can I okay. It? No, you're fine. You're stuck right. with it. All right. Yeah. Um, no, no. Yesterday was really helpful. What? The announcement you made yesterday was really helpful. Okay. I didn't, I forgot about that. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Um, I will be loading just so you guys know you won't have you, I'm supposed to be keeping an attendance from you guys. So I may like post a real quick question for you, like every day, just kind of like a check-in unless we have an assignment due. So since tomorrow night you have an assignment due, I'm not going to do that for you. Does that make sense? So anytime you submit, so let's say offense, Charlie, doesn't submit or Tanner doesn't submit an assignment for three days. Well, by day two, I have to call home and figure out what's going on. So don't make me have to call you or your house. Um, just do your stuff on time. I know for some of you, that's a kind of novel concept of submitting work on time, but I'm not leaving these assignments open to the end of the term like I've done in the past. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Avery, if you are ready, I will mute my mic and then you have the floor to do what you need to do. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I'm just going to read the first question. In this novel, Great Expectations, things are not, often not what they seem. Discuss how the theme of expectations is illustrated by and through the various major characters in this book. How are Pip's expectations different and similar from those of his surrogate father, Joe, Miss Havisham, Estella, and Pip's benefactor, Magwitch? So I said that the theme of Great Expectations is that your relationship with family, friends, etc. is more important than letting go of them to be, high, to be higher in social class. And Pip is a major example of this. Once he was trying to get his expectations, he realized that he was, damage, he was damaging his relationship with the people that were there for him. So can anyone add on to that? Uh, I can. Um, I put uh, during Great Expectations, an example of this is uh, Pip. In Great Expectations, I put in quotes, Great Expectations from Miss Havisham. Joe, though, has a different idea and does not want Pip to go because he knows the money will get his, into his head. And lastly, Estella knows that he is being played by Miss Havishan the whole time, so she doesn't, want ha doesn't have any expectations for Pip. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I can, I think. So, I think that Pip's expectations, like, differ from Joe's in the sense that, like, Joe's okay with a modest life, while mm -hmm. Pip's, like, Pip dreams of living a life as a gentleman, and it's shown throughout the story. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, so, I, I actually looked up the definition of expectations, um, and it was kind of like, um, it was money that you're going to be getting. So I kind of based mine off that. I said, uh, the theme of expectations revealed by Dickens shows how he thinks about wealth. He illustrates that all the characters who have inherited money, like Miss Havisham, Estella, and Pip, are all miserable and not happy. While other characters, like Herbert or Joe, who work hard for their money, are happier and are able to do more things with it. Yeah. I feel like when Pip... Pip was expecting, like, oh, 
when I get to be a gentleman, things are going to be great. Things are going to be better. I'm going to get Estella. But when he realized that he was losing connection with Joe and Biddy, it just was not the right fit for him, I think. Okay. Is everyone ready for question two? Mm-hmm. Why do you think it is one of Magwitch's principles, principal conditions that Pip, his nickname, always bear the name of Pip in order to receive his financial support? I said Magwitch wants Pip to always bear his nickname so he does not forget who he really was and the person he was early in the novel. Pip grew into a selfish and judgmental man, and Magwitch believes Pip deep down the Pip deep down has that caring nature from the graveyard. Okay, anyone else? I said that um I think he wanted to keep he wanted Pip to keep his informal name because he didn't want he wanted Pip to succeed in life, but he wanted Pip to remember who he was originally and where he came from. Mm-hmm. I agree with Madison because Pip used to be like kind, but when he started getting money, he turned like rude and stuff, but he didn't want him to turn rude. He wanted him to stay kind. So Pip is like the name that he started off with and he wanted to keep that. Mm-hmm. I could add on to that. Um, I put like Pip or Magic remembers Pip from the time when he was at the graveyard when he asked him for like the bread in the file and he was like uh he's like what's your name and he's like pip and then right when he was getting taken away he looked around and said pip and like he remembered him from that i have a quote from magwitch it says and this is a gentleman gentleman what i made the real and genuine one so can anyone add on next question um I think that Magwitch wants to keep, like, keeps Pip as, like, his original name. I do agree with, like, what Tanner said with, um, it is because they met before, and since Pip has turned into a gentleman, it's more formal to say, like, his full name, uh, or, like, his nickname with Handel, um, but keeping Pip is keeping, like, Pip down to earth, like, hey, you came from me instead of, hey, I'm above you now. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. it. Okay, can I move on to the next question? Okay. If Pip had not received his great expectations and never left Joe's Forge, how do you think his life would have been different? Are the lessons he learns during his physical and emotional journey necessary for him to arrive at the wisdom he inv- invinces at the middle-aged narr- narr- narrator of this tale? In what ways? Um, I said, if Pip never got his expectations, I believe that his relationship with Joe with Joe would be normal. He would be an apprentice for Joe, and he would marry Biddy. I think the pain he has felt, what he has gone through, was necessary for him to learn true wisdom. Besides Joe, he had never he never had anyone to teach him right from wrong, and he had to learn through many different mistakes and failures. To add on to that, I also think that if he never received his expectations and never underwent any of the things, the experiences that he did in missing Joe in the forge, he would have never seen the part of life that showed him how um, the the difference between having money and not being happy and not having, not having money and being happy. Yeah. Can anyone add on? Yeah. Um, um, similar. If Pip had not received his great expectations and never left Joe's Forge, he most likely would never have become a gentleman and he would have remained in the lower class system. And the lessons he learned during his physical and emotional journey are necessary for him to arrive at the wisdom. He um, he gets at the middle-aged narrator of this tale because he has experienced things on a different level than everyone else and due to his unfortunate childhood and his newer upper class status. I think I have that a quote. If, Go ahead. Okay, I think that if Pip was never able to leave, he wouldn't have been able to like figure out life on his own. It would have just like done whatever Joe taught him to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a I quote. Said, okay, go ahead. Sorry, you can go. All right. Uh, I said like if if Pippa never left the forge, I think that Miss Joe wouldn't have died uh, because Orlick wouldn't have had any reason to be jealous at Pip, and he wouldn't have uh, injured Mrs. Joe. Yeah, I agree. That's a good point. I have a quote that says, the remembrance of what I had thrown away when I was quite ignorant of its worth. Dickens 266 is what Pip says. And I think that's him saying that um, he 
was ignorant when he was young and didn't realize what he had until he ha didn't have it anymore. Okay, is everyone ready for the next question? Okay, after, what do you, why do you think Miss Havisham manipulates and misleads Pip into thinking she is a sacred benefactor? What, if anything, does she derive, derive from this action? I said, after Miss Havisham's heartbreak years ago, I believe she's trying to get back at men in general. She can, continues to do this so he could eventually fall for Estella, then she could break his heart. Is anyone? Uh, yeah, I think that she does this because she wants to spend more time training him to love Estella and get back at like the male species in general because mm -hmm. like they were supposed to love her and they didn't and they kind of failed her. And she went to like hibernation and vowed to like, mm -hmm. deteriorate them. <laughs> I could add on to that, what Davis said. Uh, I totally agree with what he said, but I put, um, I think Ms. Havisham leads Pip on because she thinks, because to think she is his benefactor because she wants to keep Pip, keep on coming back, but she wants to do this so she could hurt and get him really mad when he finds out that she is not his benefactor, just to add a little more salt to the wind. I think that Ms. Havisham sees it as an opportunity to disappoint him because she sees how vulnerable his heart is. Yeah. I, I can add on to that. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I can add on to that because I, because since uh, Miss Havisham knew that since Pip was like so little that Ms., that Pip was like attracted to Estella, um, she sees that Pip is vulnerable and she can keep doing this. She can, she can keep manipulating and misleading Pip because she knows that his weak point is Estella. Yeah, I agree. Can anyone add on or? Go to the next question. Okay. Given Dickens' portrayal of Estella, what do you think attracts Pip to her in the first place? And what, when he learns of her cold blood manipulation of men, such as her husband, keeps Pip devoted to her until the end, loving her, as he says, against reason, against promise, against peace? I said, even if Pip, do Pip doesn't notice this, I think he is attracted to Estella because of her status in society. He likes the fact that she has authority and is able to distribute that among other people. Pip also says she's beautiful, but she's cruel and mean to him. Obviously, he does not like her personality. So. Yeah, I, I also think that her prettiness deceives him, and, like, her class is, like, what he's chasing more than her, I guess, because he just wants to, like, be well-known in society and have power and just, like, acquire great expectations. Like, yeah. I think that deep down, Pip doesn't want to believe that Estella is – actually who she seems to be the cool person mm -hmm. and she um and he believes that she can change if she's not around Miss Havisham yeah, yeah I kind of see the quote that goes with what Madison said it's from um chapter five so like around when they first met and it, she was about my own age. She seemed much older than I, of course, being a girl, and beautiful and self-possessed. And she was scornful of me, as if she had been one in 20 and a queen. Mm -hmm. okay. Does anyone have anything else to add? I could add. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, Chris. Um, I said, I think at first, uh, Pip was attracted to Estella by looks alone but he stayed devoted for the challenge, which uh, by that I mean, like, he thought that he, she would love him back if he became, like, a gentleman or had lots of money or achieved some other feat. Uh, but in reality, that wouldn't really do anything to sway her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say something like that. I was going to say um, he really liked her, but he didn't realize that once – if he did anything good or anything important with his great expectations, then nothing would still change. Like, it would still be the same. I also think that it's kind of, like, curiosity-wise, because he's, like, never seen anyone who's like Estella. Like, he even says that, like, Biddy, it's someone a lot different than, like, who Biddy was. Okay, next question. Um, in this final chapter, Estella says to Pip, suffering has been stronger than all other teaching. Discuss the theme of suffering, specifically how it instructs Pip, Miss Havisham, and Estella. I said, Pip, Miss Havisham, and Estella all have something in common, which is the suffering that they have gone through. Pip grew up with no parents, no figure in his life besides Joe and Estella's hatred. Estella has gone through all of her life despising other people and talking down to them, which she hates about herself. 
Miss Havisham was blindsided by her fiance and she has lived the rest of her life in misery. After all these years, they have learned that the consequences they have faced drove them to facing their consequences and learn from them. Can anyone add to that? I think I can add on to that. I think like suffering is shown in the book based on how like everybody responds to it in the sense that like Pip uses his suffering to like build upon it while Miss Havisham uses her suffering to like foster it as hatred and give it to other people. Yeah. Uh, I think that like the theme of suffering in this book shows that or well Pip suffered a lot more like physically before he acquired his great expectations and became rich but after like he began to like lose his mind and like endured more emotional suffering because of like a lot of letdowns that he endured from Estella and uh, finding out that Magwitch was his uh, benefactor. Yeah, I have a quote. When Pip was talking to Miss Haversham and saw her cry, he said, and I look upon her with compassion, her without compassion, seeing her punishment and the ruin she was and her profound unfitness for this earth on which she was placed and the vanity of sorrow which had become. Okay, can anyone add on to that? Or next question. Okay, in chapter 49, Miss Havisham confesses to Pip that in adopting Estella, she meant to save her, Estella, from misery like my own. Do you believe this, given Dickens' harsh characteriz characterization of Miss Havisham throughout the novel? I believe that Miss Havisham adopted Estella solely for the purpose of hurting others. All of her life, she has been in pain, and that was the only way she could release her sadness and anger towards the rest of the world. Even though I think Miss Havisham does care for Estella, does not all only use her for other for hurting others. Yeah, I kind of said um, I believe that Miss Havisham she had good intentions and she meant what she said, but I think she really didn't know how to raise Estella to do anything but a uh, quote wreck re wreak revenge on all the male sex. Mm -hmm. I agree with what Chris said. I think that Miss Havisham believed she was doing the right thing in the beginning. But then she realized that she hadn't, but didn't know how to fix her mistakes, so she kept going with it. Yeah. I think that Miss Havisham... You can go. Okay. I think that Miss Havisham was so traumatized that she couldn't see that she was hurting Estella more than she was hurting the other people around her, and just was unable to move past her traumas. Do you think? Mm-hmm. I yeah. said I did believe Miss Havisham when she said that she meant to save her from misery, but doing so, she accidentally like turned Estella's heart super cold and like raised her to like hate men instead of dealing with the pain and kind of raised Estella to hurt others instead of letting herself get hurt. I think that Miss Havisham also only saw the success that she was having in turning Estella into a cool person, but she wasn't seeing the pain she was also causing Estella. And that led to, I have a, and then she, after her and Estella get in the big fight, she realizes what she did. And I have a quote, and it says, I am what you have made me. Take all the praise, take all the blame, take all the failure. In short, take me. Dickens 295 is what Estella says to Miss Havisham. And that's when Miss Havisham realizes what she's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that she like kind of turned it into a machine like instead of a human being. Yeah, um, I also have something to add. I put, um, I believe Miss Havisham wanted to adopt Estella because she wanted to cause more pain to boys. Um, I don't really think that she... Well, we all know that she didn't really save Estella from this. She just made Estella a worse person. And I feel like she feels really bad about this. And um, she goes through it and, like, trying to commit suicide and stuff. So I feel like she did not – she tried to save Estella from this, but just massively failed. Yeah, your point, Tanner, leads on to question eight, which is, in the same chapter 49, when Miss Havisham is set afire, do you believe that given her state of mind, Dickens intends us to read this as an accident or a kind of penance slash attempted suicide on her part for the cruelty to Pip and Estella? Um, the way that the chapter of Miss Havisham's accident was written describes the situation as an accident, but Pip or but Dickens intends for the audience to receive it as a suicide attempt. 
uh, I have a quote. I looked into the room where I had left her, and I saw and I saw her seated in the ragged chair upon the hearth, close to the fire, w with her back towards me. Notice how Pip pointed out that she was close, and he realized that he was she was close to the fire. Um, I can add on to that. Um, I think Miss Havisham viewed the fire as her like her punishment or her regret, and because when she she saw that. Um, Estella shut down Pip's, like, proposal, not proposal, but, like, Pip's opening up love to Estella. Um, the fire is a, sort of like this attempted suicide on her cruelty. Yeah, I agree. I think Pip saving her is Pip's way of forgiving her because he knows that that was her way of showing she was sorry because she didn't know how else to show it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to add on to that, too. I put on, Miss Havisham knows what she has done to Pip and Estella's life, and she feels really sorry about it. Um, I believe that Dickens wanted to make us think that it was not on purpose, but we intended it to be on purpose because, and I have a quote for that, too, is that after Pip saved her, she said, uh, take the pencil and write under my name, I forgive her, Dickens 388, which kind of, um, she wants forgiveness from Pip because she feels so bad for what she done. So I think it was kind of a suicide to get back at herself for what she did. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that um, Miss Havisham did actually try and kill herself. Um, and I thought she was just because how she kept saying, uh, quote, what have I done? Um, and then Pip is, he also goes to say, quote, and so again, 20, 50 times over, what had she done? Um, and I think that kind of like shows that, um, Miss Havisham had the intention of um, of uh, committing suicide, and um, that it wasn't on accident. Okay. Um, next question: What do you think makes Pip change his opinion of his benefactor Magwitch from one of initial repugnance to one of deep and abiding respect and love? So. I said, Pip's opinion of Magwitch changed from the hatred of his boy to the loving sense as a man because of what Magwitch has done for him. He has given him large amounts of money, provided him with his expectations, and sacrificed his life to see Pip once more. When Magwitch was dying, Pip told him about his daughter. Can anyone add on? I have something to say. I think that in the beginning, when Pip first meets Magwitch, he's so young. And when you're young as a child, you only see the person that's in front of you and you don't see anything behind how they look or their class. Or So when Magwitch threatened Pip in the beginning of the story because he needed food so badly, Pip only saw this as he was a bad man. Yeah, I kind of said something similar to that. Uh, we're like, I think that getting to know Magwitch uh, made Pip realize that he was a better person than the convict that he met as a child, uh, on which he based his opinion when he first met him. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have something like close to what Avery said, that I think that Pip changes his opinion of his benefactor because he knows Magwitch has done so much for him, and without him, Pip wouldn't have been able to experience the things that he has over the course of like the past few years of his life. Mm -hmm. Um, I could add on to that. I said, like, when Pitt was younger, he always saw, or he saw Magic as a bad guy because, like, Magic was threatening him, and he said, like, oh, I'll protect you from this guy, and then Pitt finds out that this guy wasn't even real. Um, or, like, he wasn't really trying to come out to attack Pip. Um, but then at the end, when he starts to realize what Magic, like, how he helped Magic out so much in just that small little deed, um, he realized that Magic is actually a a noble person that was just trying to pay back Pip for something that he did. Um, I see this incident as almost good karma because Joe, Miss Joe and Mr. Joe told Pip that he wasn't, he shouldn't come in contact with any convict or help them or talk to them or anything. But by helping the convict and breaking their rules, he later in life got something back from it succeeded from it. I think Pip also kind of understands Magwitch's position more because they've both kind of gone through traumatic experiences and um, they have a good relationship now because of that. Yeah, they're able to bond and learn from their mistakes that they've made and 
now they're older they're more mature they're wiser and they're pip i think pip almost sees magwitch as not a father figure but pip's an orphan and magwitch lost his um lost his child so he's giving to pip what he would have wanted to give to his child okay can anyone add on okay in chapter 59 when pip places joan Betty's son also named pip on the same tombstone that opens a novel what do you think dickens intends to tell us with this image given the novel's theme of how the sins of others are visited upon us do you view this image as a foreboding one in any way i said by pip saying baby pip on a tombstone at the end of the novel, it symbolizes the life young Pip would have had. Pip does not want the baby to follow in his footsteps necessarily, but to be able to learn from his mistakes. I do not think that this that this theme is a foreboding one. I think Pip is trying to teach the bad to be able to learn from it faster than he was able to. Can anyone add on? Uh, I could add on. Um... I said Dickens did this because he wanted people to think about what the second Pip will live like, or like Pip the second. Um, this also shows that history may repeat, and uh, little Pip might go down the same road. But this could also be like little Pip could, or Pip the second could like look up and see what Pip's mistakes were, and maybe change his life. So it could go two different ways, I think. Yeah. So on page four sixty one, Joe says to Pip. We give him the name of Pip for your sake, dear old chap, and we hope he might grow a little bit like you, and we think he do. I think that's saying that Joe, Joe hasn't seen the pain that Pip has been through. He's only seen Pip succeeding in life and having money, and he thinks Pip's happy, although he's not. So he wants little Pip to follow his path. Yeah. Can anyone add on to that? Okay. I think we're done. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, is there anything else that like you guys want to touch on, be it that um, there's a question that you want to go deeper in or there's something that you know like someone in fourth period asked me a question about um miss havisham's death scene in the movie versus what was written in the book that is this is your time to kind of have that conversation too um i actually have a question so on number six i'll give you guys a second to scroll up to it it um it says in the final chapter estella says to pip suffering has been stronger than all other teaching discuss the theme of suffering in this book, specifically how it instructs Pip, Miss Havisham, and Estella. I was um, wondering about the Estella part. Um, I said this shows like Estella did not really want people to suffer, but she was just trying to do what Miss Havisham wanted her to do, to, which is to make boys suffer. But I didn't know, like, I was kind of confused. Like, I don't know if Estella maybe wanted to do the same thing, like, or if she was just trying really, really hard because it kind of was like a little different in the book and the movie. It made me like think a little more about it. So, if anybody like wants to respond to that, I'm assuming you're all looking at your questions. Yeah, <clears throat> that kind of hurt. Anyone have anything for Tanner? Are you guys there? I'm, I'm here. Okay. 
It was like dead silence. So. I, just, I just muted mine, so I'm dying laughing. I, I feel we're, like I'm like weird. I don't know if anybody. We're here. We're just muted. Okay. Um, did anyone? I mean, does anyone have anything to shed the light on what Tanner's question was? Okay. Tanner, can you maybe restate your question? Ask it again. Okay. okay. I'll say it again. So it says in the final chapter, Estella says to Pip, "Suffering has been stronger than all other teaching." Discuss the theme of suffering in this book, especially, or especially how it instructs Pip, Miss Havisham, and Estella. Like in the book, in the movie, I just I didn't know. I knew that Estella was really trying hard for Miss Havisham, so like to do what Miss Havisham wanted her to, but also like Estella did it in a way where even with Miss Havisham wasn't looking, she would still be rude. Like I don't know if she would just keep on going as hard as she can to do this for Miss Havisham or if like she was just doing this out of what Miss Havisham taught her and just like a normal kind of lifestyle kind of. So I guess to answer Tanner's question I think she just just thought like that because that's the way she was like raised and I don't think she knew any different. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. I think that she also just wanted to uphold Miss Havisham's wishes no matter where she was and who she was around. Because she yeah, thought she I owed it to Miss Havisham. A bit of Does anyone have any more questions or something you want to touch base on? Um, yeah, does anyone have anything? Because I have a, like a little spiel. Everyone good? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I will get everything together um, shortly here. I'm trying to load everything to the YouTube channel. So while you guys were um, talking, I was taking notes and trying to upload the audio um, from for the YouTube channel. Um, it's just going to be a private, so no one can, not everyone can go to it. And you're just going to want to find, um, depending on if I can get everyone's loaded, um, you're going to want to find the opposite of your class. So you want to find round one for you guys, class period six, um, and then kind of flip flop that and you want to do that. Um, and then I asked second and fourth period this question, and I'll ask you guys this. Um, do you feel like I need to kind of check in with you guys at the end of the week, kind of post a little question for you to answer to me, send it back? Um, like, are you struggling? Do you need some support? Or do you feel like it's you more than likely will just reach out to me if you need support? I think I would just reach out to you if yeah, I needed some help. Yeah, a lot of us would just reach out to you. Okay. Yeah, I would too. Okay. So my second period obviously needs more support than you guys do. Um, okay. Is there anything that you need me to clarify? So I know Chris, you said those directions, I'm assuming you mean the link with the video showing you where to go before all this kind of took place, or you're just talking about the announcement I sent out. Wait, I'm confused. Uh, which, what are you talking you about? Said, you said, you said something really helped you the other day and I oh, said, yeah. The, uh, was it the video of me showing you how to do something or was it just an announcement? Yeah, it was the announcement because I had forgotten about the Ed Puzzle thing. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll try to do a daily kind of like, hey, remember this is due. So like right now you guys, should, you have something to be working on. Um, so understand you have your Socratic seminar reflection. As long as I can get these audio files to upload properly, you're going to listen to those. Um, and remember, I'll know because you want to, I've listened to them already over and over again, and I've taken notes. So I'll know if you're like kind of just BSing me and you know that. Um, and then you'll put those notes into your file of your reflection, which I'll load. It's not going to be due until tomorrow night. Um, and then I won't necessarily, um, 
be assigning you anything new because you have Sadler and then you have your graphic essay. I know some people have really been struggling with the graphic essay. So if there's a point where you're trying to email me and it's not making sense, I can do a one-on-one -on -one chat just like this with you, just you. I can send you a link and go from there, um, which is usually what happens. It's not a problem. Um, your graphic essay is due on Monday night. So plan for Wednesday for everyone to tune into a, a live chat, which will be me with like showing you the images or at least um, giving you um, the um, pictures of them. Like I'll take pictures and load them and we'll kind of go through it and we'll talk a little bit about that. So Wednesday you want to plan to be live, if that makes sense. So wait, is that on this platform? Yeah, right now this is the platform I'm going to use for right. because it records it so that it can go back for you to kind of review as long as I can get the files to load the right way. That's the only problem I'm having right now. But are there any questions about that? We have to get on Thursday, like around Thursday night. Pardon? We have to get on, a thurs on Thursday night to... Thursday night. Okay. Wednesday, Tanner. Thank Wednesday. you. Wednesday, oh. you'll do a live session. Like you'll check in with me live like you are, but it'll be everyone. So it'll be everyone in your class. Um, I will, speaking of Thursday, Thursday and Friday, you're probably going to see a video kind of walking you through um, your literary analysis, like first step that you're going to need to start doing. I don't want you to start that unless you're done with your graphic essay and you're like, okay, let me get a head start on it. Some of you, I know I had someone in I think second period who's already pretty much done with their graphic essay, which is fine. Um, but you need to start thinking about, do you want to use Great Expectations, Lord of the Flies, any of those short stories? And if you need me to get you a copy of those, I need to know ahead of time. So like if you happen to have left it in your locker, I can send you a digital copy or anything like that. Um, but I will not assign you just a sheet and tell you to fill it in. I'll usually record the video like I did um, over the weekend and show you what you have to do. So, um, if we were the working with a partner, do we just meet up with them somewhere? Yeah, that's all on you. However, you're going to do that. I'm, I mean, I'm not like, if you're, I told you, if your parents say, no, we don't want you, that is perfectly, I understand that. I'm just giving you the option if you want to work with a partner. You would do Monday night at 11.59. So you're going to submit your image of it. Got it. So in the submission file, you'll see the assignment and then you'll see a file upload and it'll be an image. If you have a problem with it, then just make sure you message me the picture and I can go from there. But I would prefer you to kind of submit it in the assignment category. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Everyone good? Um, just to make sure we're taking notes on the other yep. Socratic seminar. Yep. And that's not relating to the summary of the key ideas, the reaction, the explanation. Correct. Thing. That, is about, that is about this session. Okay. So you're going to react to the one that you were in, and then you're going to just take notes on the one you weren't in. As if you were sitting on the outside of the circle, you're going to kind of flip the roles there. Okay. And that will have a completely different, like, like submission spot? No, they'll be, well, they'll be, it'll be an assignment and they'll, they'll be together. So you'll take your notes oh, and okay. attach them to your reflection sheet. That's it. So okay, that makes sense. One submission, submission, not two separate ones. The Thank you for submission clarifying. thing is not up yet, is it? There? I have not. I'm, cause I'm waiting to make sure that I can get um, all the files loaded with the links for you guys to listen to everything. Cause I'm going to put the links in the assignment, not in an announcement. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Well, Davis, thanks for going to Tanner's house to take care of this. So that shows some responsibility. Welcome. Um, all right. If you guys don't have any other questions, um, I will let you go and you guys have a good rest of the day and I will chat with you guys as you need help. Keep paying attention to Canvas and see what, um, like I said, it should be loaded this evening for you guys to answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. Yeah, you yep. too. See you guys. Okay, bye. See you. Bye.